I'm here with John Kenilopoulos. John, our technology and ability to predict uh, the appropriate lens power for patients, especially patients who have not had LASIK or PRK, is really very, very good. But occasionally patients come to us, uh, especially to uh, you and, and you know, to me, cornea people, with corneal pathology that can make lens calculation difficult. There, there's been a lot of talk at meetings of when it's appropriate and what the treatment goals should be for implanting toric IOLs in patients with keratoconus, but let me ask you just sort of more broadly, how do you manage patients whose corneas don't lend themselves to easy lens calculations? It's, it's an excellent uh, question, Josh, and thanks for having me. I think what, uh, what's important, and, I, and it came out in this meeting as well here in New York, is that we cannot just look at a topography and make conclusions and clinical decisions. We have to uh, incorporate the full eye exam, slit lamp examination, evaluate whether the, the quote-unquote keratoconus we're seeing is just dry eye, is a limbo stem cell insufficiency, is some cornea injury or some apical scarring. I think once that is put aside and we have a clear diagnosis of keratoconus, that major uh, crossroads is whether this patient uh, is a patient that did or can wear uh, RGP, a contact lens. So then obviously you would go the monofocal way because uh, if you use a toric IO on that patient, you kind of lock in into the direction that they cannot wear an RGP. And I think that's a very important point. Or it's going to be a, be a, be a bi-toric lens or a right. front toric lens or something really, really complicated. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If it's a patient that could never wear an RGP or uh, in discussion with them and, or in your clinical assessment will not be able to do it in the future, then we would try, I would personally try to do a toric IOL, always a modest toric IOL, to reduce some of that cylinder and maybe um, in Europe and available now in the US uh, very shortly clinically uh, use a topographic uh, guided uh, PRK to normalize the cornea further if there was such need uh, put in by the patient. John, let, let, let me ask you something that occurs relatively commonly and I just want to know what your strategy is. So a patient comes in with a stigmatism that is non-orthogonal Mm -hmm. follow so it, it, it's it's not totally regular I want to put in a, a toric implant lens uh, because aside from this aspect of the cornea things look relatively even how much cylinder do I want to correct with these patients That's a very good question and something we're evaluating clinically currently because we do have a lot of uh, topographic measurements which usually give you the average uh, cylinder for that cornea most of our IOL calculating devices, uh, the interferometries, give us a ring, either three millimeters or two rings, 2.8 and 3.2 millimeters of central cornea keratometry, which may be more applicable to a cataract patient. So I would kind of look into what the topographic and the keratometric cylinder is within the central five millimeters. And usually within those central five millimeters, astigmatism is, is more regular than we see it in a general topographic uh, representation. Um, so I would shoot for correcting the cylinder within the four, three to four millimeters of central cornea, always uh, considering what the pupillometry is on this patient. It's different if you have a patient that, that dilates in scotopic uh, conditions up to five and a half, it's different if they dilate to eight. Um, and what is the patient's favorable activity in the day. So we're seeing that cataract surgery is turning into um, more and more uh, a decision on re a lot of refractive endpoints, which I think is very exciting because we do have the technology to address these uh, parameters for our patients. Yeah, it's r it's really cool cool stuff. I mean, it's turning into just sort of one big surgery exactly. uh, that, that, that is about making the patient see better. Uh, John, thank you very much for being so generous with your time with us today. Oh, thanks very much for having me, Josh. Always a pleasure.